see from a soft tissue perspective, what do we have? We have soft tissue complications which are due to the anatomy of the patient. And we try to find ways to prevent. And a lot of lectures are, if we put the implant there, this will happen. But this is just presumptions. Or they are retrospective distortions, how we call them. But if it happens that we have complications, do we have therapeutical solutions? Let me show you what we do. Now, we know a natural teeth tooth doesn't need a buccal plate to survive. We need, no, a natural tooth doesn't need soft tissue. A tooth can survive with a recession for many, many years. However, an implant is a total difference. Whenever we tried in the past to mimic teeth with implants, we failed. We need buccal plate 2 millimeters, soft tissue 1.5, interproximal height of bone should be there. We have the anatomy of the patient and our surgical skills of how to place an implant. What do I mean if we try to mimic natural teeth we failed? Now, if we look in the history of implantology, I come from Heidelberg, Germany. Okay, near Heidelberg, 10 miles, the IMZ implant was made many, many years ago. And we thought back then that if a tooth moves during mastication, coronal apical, the implant should move. And they build in the intramobile element to mimic that. Then after that, we extracted teeth and we copied them on the machine, copying machine, to make sure that the anatomy of the root is the same. And that was a failure. Then we made implants to fill the socket. Today, we try to, try to give biological space. And prosthetically, we try to mimic the emergence profile of a natural tooth. And today, we know that that creates recession. And then an implant is not a tooth. And whenever we try to mimic teeth with implants, we fail. Now, maybe this time we are right, but you see there is, we need the different anatomy for the implant than the natural teeth. And our biggest enemy today is the biological changes which happen after implant placement. 